Hey everyone, so I am recording this video in English because there's probably a much bigger audience for a, for a video like this in English rather than Polish. And I just wanted to show you um, how I deal with very weird um, drilling angles mm -hmm. on uh, bent or half bent pipes with you know some kind of weird geometry, a, a bent shank. Um, this is something that I that I just finished turning and you see that the, the, the uh, air hole goes um, at a quite low angle and exits down here through the mortise um, and a lot of people are tempted to put a plug uh, here and just uh, drill a mortise and um, that's that's not good um, and sometimes people put rings or some decoration to cover it that's also in my personal opinion not not super good uh, because if at all possible, it's always good to be able to put a drill bit through this, through the air hole uh, later in 10, 20 years, where when it's all you know, um, uh, when there's tar on the on on the ways uh, on the walls of the airway. So if it pos if it's possible, it's it's always good to leave this leave clearance for a drill bit. Um, and the way I deal with that is I just make a really big um, tenon. And that's one of the reasons for the popularity of the reverse calabash design because it gives you a lot of freedom uh, in how you drill the pipe because if you have a, an empty cavity uh, all the way down here, you can basically have the, uh, the air hole um, coming in at any angle and, um, and it will work. But uh, if you want to do a standard design, you don't want to put a, a big chamber that, that, that just sits there empty. Um, you just make a really big tenon and this is what I did here as you can see and I've blackened the wood inside uh, with just some black stain um, and what I do especially with um, larger holes like this I put a very thick coating of uh, super glue on, um, on the hole on the surface of the hole so that it fills all the open pores of the wood um, and then I just uh, bore it with a tiny boring bar and just uh, take, I just, I don't take off any material, I just uh, take the same cut that I did to um, get on size and then just remove the excess super glue that's, that's dried. And that gives, you can't really tell from the, from the video, but you know, with your finger, if you, if you touch it, it's extremely smooth. It's like, it's weird, but it's, it's very smooth. It feels almost like plastic because it's basically um, cyanoacrylate um, infused wood. So um, this, this, this mortise will, um, so basically I've done all that is possible to make sure that this big mortise stays on size, doesn't warp too much and, uh, and gives a good uh, fit uh, for as long as possible. And, um, uh, by boring it, you also make sure it's it's perfectly um, round and and uh, um, circular. Uh, that is not not uh, a wobbly shape like you might get with uh, with a drill bit. So that's my way of dealing with it. Then, uh, as you see, the the air hole exits at the very center of the uh, of the hole. So when I make a mouthpiece, I will just have a large tenon going inside. It will connect the two holes. Um, in this spot and they will align perfectly and allow for a pipe near to pass and also uh, it will allow the airway to be reamed um, in the future if necessary and since this is a, um, a, a bit of, of prior bark same as on, around the uh, chamber uh, I will be sandblasting it and uh, possibly I will just um, take care of this notch here I will just uh, take off the sharp edges and make it look sort of um, <clears throat> less visible. Uh, you will you will be able to see it, but only after you take off the, the mouthpiece. So um, that's my my way of working. That's that's how I do it. And uh, thanks for watching. And see you in the next video.